Hello. Right. What this video is about, hopefully about, is adding some steering behavior to some very basic AI that I've got already kind of working on this um, Emoji Pong game or demo. So here we go. Um, so as you can see, on the right hand side, if it if it wasn't obvious, is the the AI paddle, and on <laughs> sorry, on the left is me uh, scoring an own goal. Um, and I'm using the the arrow keys at the moment. I can also use. Can you see my mouse? I can then click, or if you're on a mobile device, you can tap. I'll put a link to this code, um, probably the code pen example. So then you can you know you can fork that into your own repository, your own collection. Um, which you can very quickly do on CodePen, by the way. Even if you haven't got a, a an account on there, you can you know fiddle around with this code and, and play and, and things like that without signing up to anything. And if you do sign up, it's free anyway. Um, <clears throat> so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I can click, and that will move my paddle on the left hand side around, and we've got the AI moving on the right hand side. So what this video is about is. Can I add some some different AI? And the kind of the principle, the agenda of this of this video. It's the first one that I've I've kind of made, so it's kind of like an experiment. But it's um, it's for anyone interested in a bit of JavaScript or or coding, game coding in in general. Um, so very relaxed. And also in particular AI, and by that I I don't mean artificial consciousness which I'm very interested in, but this is just, you know, the kind of the, the subroutines or the functions, the methods that deal with moving the the autonomous agents or the, the non-player characters around on a screen, maybe using some some tactics. Like like here, let's can you maybe detect the algorithm that I'm kind of using to move the AI as it stands? It's about, I don't know, about 20 lines of code. It's very, very simple. It's kind of moving in a very, like, not juddery way, but a kind of staccato way. It's only moving, should be only moving every second. And what it's doing, let's see if we can, uh, I can demonstrate this as I'm playing. I'm using the arrow keys at the moment. Um, I think if it's in my side, the paddle, you see, it kind of backs away, goes to the baseline, but tries to kind of follow where the 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 puck is the ball is and if it's in its own side it tries to get behind the puck and then if it is behind the puck it kind of shoots forward towards the halfway line which would then allow it to hit the puck as it were to try and score a goal so i think it's one well done ai um eight eight twelve yes eight twelve right so let's look to the code so what i'm going to try and do is um augment the no fully replace <laughs> Fully replace the present AI um, with steering behavior, if that's possible. What do I mean by steering behavior? So, this example that I made uh, using JavaScript, um, and also that the steering behavior, what I know of it, is not much yet, is, is following the tutorials made by Daniel Schiffman, Dan Schiffman, on his wonderful um, Coding Train uh, YouTube channel. I'll put a link in, in the description absolutely go and check those out um they're, they're very fun <clears throat> very informative right um so just very quick basics i'm i'm using the brackets editor at the moment um programming in javascript um and using the p uh, the p5 library which is uh, just very briefly a uh, 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 a library of functions to allow you to draw to the screen very easily um, to deal with input like mouse or or if you're on a mobile device like touching the screen very very easily mouse clicks uh, key strokes all of that kind of thing so it's got a set of functions like if we have a look at the setup um, function creating a canvas background color um, or in the draw loop um, Trying to find 
me drawing something. Here we go. Drawing the court, stroke weight, no fill, stroke, rectangle, line. All of these are functions in the P5 library. Um, you can very easily make colourful things quickly and easily. So if you want to find out more about that, go to um, the coding train channel. I'll, put a, I'll definitely put a link in, uh, made by Daniel Schiffman. And you'll have a lot of fun and learn a lot very, very quickly and get addicted even more addicted to programming if you're not already obsessed. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to give you an overview very quickly of the, the variables that you'll you'll need to understand in order to, to follow what I'm doing, um, and then we'll just try and hack together <laughs> um, the steering behaviour. By the way, my, so the point of this video, other than you know showing you some JavaScript, maybe uh, enjoying the debugging or whatever, and seeing if this actually works, if it produces anything interesting, is to ask the question, if you if you already know steering behaviour, that kind of thing, is have I actually done it? Have I used steering behaviour authentically or not? Is what I'm about to do just representative of some, some watered-down steering, or have I legitimately reproduce the Craig Reynolds vehicle steering behavior. Right, um, since I've just mentioned it, steering is, um, according to, to, to Reynolds, his, his version of it, is about uh, 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 an entity on screen, like, like the paddle. Let's bring up the, the game while I'm talking about this. It's uh, a character, something moving towards something it it wants to get to. So in this case, um, the the AI paddle is not just moving towards the puck, but it's moving towards a location that would be beneficial to hitting the puck towards <laughs> my side of the screen. So it's not it's not steering towards the puck. It's steering towards somewhere on the screen relative to, determined by, inspired by where the puck is. And steering, or Reynolds steering, is about steering um, relative to your current velocity or current vector, the direction, the speed, um, um, and, and your target or desired um, vector. So so let's go back to the code. Let me show the variables that you'll need to know about. So paddle variables. Paddle 1 is the player's uh, paddle. Paddle 2 is the AI. Um, paddle 2, there we are. X and Y are just the Cartesian coordinates, location, position on the screen. And this one is going to be important. Um, the movement by movement, I've kind of named that badly, I apologise. Movement kind of means, <coughs> excuse me, speed, velocity, with a bit of acceleration. I'm kind of simplifying a physics engine, uh, sorry, doing a simplification of a simplified physics engine where I'm not using Euler integration, but kind of a, a, a sketchy version of that. So Euler integration would simply be... Um, your, the position of your thing on the screen um, has velocity added to it. So in this case, you'd have uh, position uh, paddle one's x location. Add on to that its uh, velocity, and then if you want to to move it, you would have then acceleration, which kind of stands for force in physics. A force is acceleration or change in acceleration. So you would um, Maybe if I did this properly, or using Euler integration, which is not properly, so I shouldn't have said that. It, you know, I, I I've simplified it because I wanted to keep things simple. So what I've done is kind of the, the proper version relative to what I was aiming at. Um, but if you were trying to do Euler integration, you would perhaps every time you hit the the key, uh, the right arrow, let's say, then you would add a force. You would say that the force would be the acceleration would increase to the x-axis, and then that will get added to its speed or its velocity, and then that would would add on to the the position. Anyway, I'm doing a simplified version of that, but I don't 
I don't know if that translates anyway to, to Euler integration. Anywho, uh, so we've got my sketchy movement come velocity come acceleration. Let's see that working. So that will be in move player paddle. So again, badly named slightly, apologies. Move means that the physics, do the physics. It doesn't mean um, decide to move. That will be handled by AI. So what am I doing? Let's look at the AI one. So again, move AI paddle doesn't mean decide where it's moving. It means based on what you've decided in terms of a new heading, add that to my, my position. So player two, so the, the AI's X location, add on its velocity acceleration on the X axis, add on the, the Y, speed acceleration and now I've got some dampening which means like a deceleration I'm timesing its current um, velocity by less than one <laughs> so that takes it down so it decelerates so that's why you get a nice slidey gradual acceleration uh, and or rather deceleration after the fact so that's 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 my version of a, a bit of a, a simplified Euler integration, um, which is probably in, in its way, and certainly how I've had to now explain it, more complicated. But there we go. Right, and the rest of this is a little bit of a hack there uh, to keep the movement kind of smooth, and this is just the, the collision detection for the, the court boundary, or not the whole court, you just get to stay on your own side. Actually, let's, let's just, while we're here, comment out the restriction on the x-axis for the AI paddle. So now, hopefully, it'll be able to go wherever it wants. It will just be chasing, yep. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. It's chasing the, um, the puck until it kind of, the puck goes into my half. And then according to its brain, its AI, it then runs back towards its own baseline. It almost looks like it's coming into my side by accident and then running back, which I can't do. Anyway, that was kind of cute. Right, uh, let's switch that back on. Okay, so, so you can see at least that this code is live and real and it does something. So, um, uh, let's look at the AI. So what basically happens here, first we've got something to do with time. All this means is... Um, and I've set AI time, this variable is one, which means one second. So it's saying every second, every time one second has elapsed, it will run down through the, the, the function. It will decide a new heading for the AI paddle. And then it will pass that new heading into the move AI paddle, which take care of the physics, as we've explained. Um, if time isn't up yet, so if millis, millis is the P5 function to call the present elapsed time of your game since the browser kind of started up to run, to run your game. Um, <clears throat> stands for milliseconds. So if the difference between current time and last time the AI moved is less than one second, it's not time to move yet, I've just said return. So that will go back to the draw loop, which in the P5 way of doing things just loops around and around and around so is is your game loop so this is like a little gate a little barrier the AI will only work every second so we can change that maybe if we had steering we want it to happen every time it loops through we'll, we'll experiment so then it we've got um, the heading variables and at the end we should pass those into yes set the AI paddle destination so we pass in the two parameters, the new heading X and Y, heading X and Y. Let's just have a look at what that function does. So set a I paddle destination. It creates a vector out of uh, the X and Y heading. So it sounds complicated, but it isn't really complicated. All of the, all of a vector is here is like a, a double or a compound variable. 
It's just a convenient way of storing an X and a Y position coordinate. That's it. I just moved the computer around slightly. It's on my knees, on my lap. I'll try not to do that again. It might have created a lot of noise. I apologize. Then we've got... Um, um, so then I'm fiddling around with the vector. The point why I put it in a vector is is so that I can do this. I can kind of normalize it, which means its magnitude is just one, and then I can I can change that um, that magnitude to to change the speed. So we don't have to look in this. This is just a black box, a magic box. We just put in a new heading, and this function will will tell the physi the simplified physics engine to to move the, the paddle in that direction. Right. So what does the AI currently do? So this is the whole brain so far. There we go. Not much. A lot of space there. It's mostly comments. Right. So we've talked about the, the heading X and Y. So I said if the puck's location is is on the player's side, do this, else there we're saying if we're, you know, if the puck is definitely in the AI player's side, then if it's behind the puck, if the AI is behind the puck, then move towards it, shoot. Um, new, ignore comments here, so I <laughs> fiddle around with it, things. If it's in front of the puck, then it'll try and, it will try and get behind the puck in a very simplified way. It basically just goes along a diagonal, I think. So I've done that so that the... If if this is the the uh, AI puck uh, AI paddle and this is the puck, it won't just try to get behind it by going through it, which will score an own goal. So it's basically doing that or that to try and avoid the puck, get behind it, and then shoot. So let's replace this. Let's say oh, we're actually going to do some coding. I'm excited. Here we go. We're going to do. Um, we're going to say if. Um, so we're, we're introducing some Reynolds steering. So let's call it Ray. If Ray is true, is true, go and do this. So we'll call it Reynolds AI. There we go. Do that. Um, once we've done that, we then want to return. We don't want to, to run the present AI. So I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to leave it there. Return. Um, just put my uh, braces on there. Oh, plus. Right, there we go. So if Ray equals true, so Ray will mean if I want Reynolds steering, then run the Reynolds steering, go and do that. Um, and then don't then return, don't do the rest of it. If it's false, obviously, it will ignore this and it will just run the AI as normal. So uh, let's make uh, that variable var ray equals um, false. So um, false means that we are using my hacky hacking hacky AI smiley face. Um, true means that we want to use um, Reynolds um, Reynolds steering AI. Exclamation mark. Exciting. Right. Control save. Oh, I was going to run it then just to check that we haven't made any basic mistakes yet. But we haven't made the, the function. So we need a function. Reynolds AI. No parameters yet. And there we go. Um, so this should just do what it was doing before because we've got Ray onto false. So it should just ignore it and carry on as before. Yep, lovely. Right. And it wins. 1-0. Well done. So if we set that to true, control save, and start running. Hopefully the AI will stay still. Yes, it's just waiting. Waiting to, to receive its new brain. Right. 1-0. I win that one. Excellent. Um, so let's let's see what we're gonna do. Um um, at the end of the function, so we've got to pass in a new heading. So first of all, 
we want a heading, empty variables, and then we want to, the same as the, the present hacky AI, we want to pass in its new um, its new heading coordinates. So now I'm actually doing something. I'm it's passing in nothing at the moment. Let's run it. I don't know if it'll be it'll default to zero and try and get to the top left. Yes, it's trying to get to the top left. <laughs> there we go. So it's already doing something, um, which is lovely. Um, so let's. I noticed it could only get up to not right at, not right up to the, the midway line. Anyway, ignore that. Ignore that. I'm trying to keep this video very short. Also, I really need to wee. So uh, added pressure and excitement. Um, so in between here, in between here, we've got to do something. Do some calculation. Do the steering to to tell it where to put x, where to head y. So um, the basic the basic idea is we want to say the new vector this is just pseudocode, we want to say the new vector equals um, the target target vector minus current vector oh <laughs> vector there we go that's it and then we want to say so that new vector will have a, an x component and a y component so then we'll simply be able to say um, h x equals the new vectors x component and in fact we're going, this is this is wonderfully Converting itself to real code, uh, new vector y. There we go. A bit of coding alchemy there, from pseudo code to, to real code. Um, so we're kind of programming backwards. There we go. Uh, so what do I need? I need something called a, a new vector. So, so we need variable new vector. There we go. Ah, to make it a vector in the P5 library. You simply say create vector. There we go. And it will actually be a three dimensional vector. So it'll have an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. And it will automatically um, set it to 0, 0, 0. So we can keep it like that. Um, so we're also going to have a target vector and a current vector. So I've been a bit ambiguous because a vector, it's really like a, a direction and your the magnitude at which you're moving in that direction, but also it can be used to kind of just store, as I said before, two uh, variables, two static kind of like um, positions, which is different from thinking about the vector in terms of like the the mathematical idea of a vector being a, a, a direction and magnitude. So I want to be careful with that. I don't want to obscure that fact. And if the point of this video is maybe I am obscuring that in how I put this together. And so it won't really be steering behavior. But let's see what ha let's see if anything happens. Um, so we need a target vector. So um, variable target vector equals uh, create vector and now the target is going to be well let's just steer it towards the puck to begin with so we've got the pucks x, x and the pucks y there we go um well, it looks like pucky anyway um got distracted we've got variable um current vector equals create vector and now we want player two's x and y so we've got p2 ah now we've got the movement now that's interesting the movement is kind of more the the mathematical vector the vector of of 
direction and, and magnitude, although it's in the comp in my non Euler integration. So let's just try the standard, the location p two x p two y. Uh, kind of got everything so far, um, and now take out the uh, convert the pseudocode. Oh, can I actually just is that authentic enough to work? New vector, yep, equals target vector minus ah. I don't think that will work. I don't know if the if JavaScript allows you to to minus one vector from another just because they're vector objects. Let's just be safe. So P5, I just need to call up um, P5 vector and then I can use the sub function and I want to, I think it's this way around, is it the target vector away from the current vector? So it's either that or I put the current vector in first. So I want to minus the, to take the current vector away from the target vector. No, target vector away from the, the current vector. I'm, dub I'm doubly confused. Let's, let's see what happens. I think that's everything now. Right. <laughs> I'm really excited. Let's see. <laughs> right, it is moving around. It is going, oh, it's going towards the top of the screen and settling there. Let's, so we've got, yeah, it's trying to hit it. And now it's going down again, but it's going very slowly. Right, let's just try, um, let's just try swapping these around. It didn't look like it was fleeing. You would expect if I, if I got these the wrong way around, it would be fleeing rather than, um, than pursuing. So it was still going towards it, interestingly enough, and now it's stuck at the top. How strange. Right. Let's let's follow my first intuition. I'll just put these back. I think that's right. My first intuition was not to use its current location, but its movement. That's really using the vector in the true mathematical sense, which I anticipate is what the Reynolds steering behavior needs because it's about adding a steering force I'm not really. I'm not doing that at all. So I don't know whether this would count anyway. Let's just see what happens there. That's going down. Oh, and up, and up. Oh, and down. Now that's that seems to be working. Oh my goodness. Yes, oh, that's exciting. So we've got got steering behavior working, although it's not going backwards. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Yes, it is. That's wonderful. So we've got, I've added steering now to, to this. And that's working better than I thought. It's not as good as my hacky version in terms of scoring, but it's much more satisfying in kind of steering around the puck. That's really cool. By the way, in programming, programming doesn't go like this usually. It does not happen without bugs, without usually not doing anything. Nothing usually happens, so this is lovely. Um, wow, okay, that's kind of cool. Right, so let's see if we can improve it now. Let's see if we can kind of anticipate where the puck is going to go. So we're going to say Actually, let's change, I think, puck move x, yes. Let's change the target vector to a, a more mathematical vector. So instead of simply that compound variable that's got an x and a y, 
we're going to refer to its velocity come acceleration thing. Let's refer to that. So P move Y as well. Let's see what kind of behavior we've got now. So it's moving towards it. And <laughs> I have no idea why it's doing that. It's now going to the top of the court and it's staying. Ah, it might be because the negative the negative polarity of when the puck moves up and down. I I don't know. No, it's moving towards it there. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, let's move that back. So what I'm doing now is horrible. I'm using a mathematical kind of vectory thing and a kind of a pseudo vector together in 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 Reynolds' beautiful, otherwise be beautiful formula of the, the, the new vector being the target vector minus the, the current vector or the other way around. Um, let's, so let's return that. So puck, puck x and puck y. And so what we were going to do, and this will be the last thing, we'll finish off this video, and I'd really encourage anyone, anyone who watches, um, to add comments about um, whether you think this is steering or not, um, and uh, just any thoughts about steering and AI and if it was useful and things like that. Try it out yourself. Um, let's have a look. So what we're going to do to anticipate, we're going to not chase where the puck is, we're not going to chase where the puck is, but if it's moving kind of this way, we're going to anticipate that um, where are my hands, right? We're going to anticipate, if it's moving like that way, we're going to anticipate that it's going to reach here in the future. So we're going to add on its movement vector to where it currently is. And so the, the, the AI paddle will chase that. And so without increasing its speed, without playing with how often it's, it's deciding to move, we're just going to make its its choice of movement a bit more intelligent. I find this idea then much more satisfying. It's kind of a bit more thoughtful and beautiful. We're not kind of cheating with the way it's moving, but we're, but improving its brains, improving the organization of its decisions. And I can't believe I'm just talking about Pong, emoji Pong <laughs> as well. Right, let's have a look. Uh, so I'm gonna say its current position plus the puck's uh, movement. So that's just P movement X, that's right, plus P movement Y. And I'm just thinking now, just in case that's normalized, so it doesn't really have a magnitude, let's times that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's times that by five. I know that's kind of the top speed that I'm using, or top magnitude that I'm using. Let's just see if that improves its performance. We've got no way to measure except subjective looking. And these, oh, I don't know, I don't, might be my imagination. It looks a bit more frisky here. Oh, yeah, that's definitely better. Oh, that was, that was a, a naughty little uh, move. It's 4-0 here, guys. 4-1. And it is still moving backwards and things, so it's still working, but it's mo it's able to move or anticipate where that puck is going a lot more intelligently, although it doesn't know how to go around the puck. There we go. Well, that's quite exciting. So let's just see if we can accelerate, sorry, amplify that um, effect see whether that was actually happening. So I've times it by a factor of 10, 50. It's going to um, anticipate that the puck can move very fast. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you noticed there, but the, the, the AI paddle just overtook the, the puck. It's not doing as well now, interestingly enough, because it's kind of, it's the nature of the way it's pursuing is 
too great. So yeah, there's definitely a difference. Definitely a difference. So that's kind of working. That's interesting. And so um, th this video isn't about explaining Craig Reynolds' um, work at all. I again just advise going to Dan Schiffman. Uh, channel coding train to learn about that in a much more coherent informed clear way and I really apologize for mixing up the the, the vector substitution which I'll probably confuse people about um, uh, but Reynolds would call that uh, pursuing behavior so a vehicle will will seek if it's just kind of chasing the location of something but it, to pursue means to kind of anticipate where that, that object or entity will be and try and intercept the, the kind of direction it's going in. Right, there we go. Um, I'll, again, I'm just saying this to remind myself. I'll put a link to this code on CodePen. Um, you're very welcome, of course, to, to fork that and me uh, mess around with it, of course, um, to, to, to comment any suggestions, things like that. Right, thank you very much. Enjoy. Where is... <laughs> I can't find how to stop. Here we go. Stop recording. Goodbye.